these reports of irregularities with the electronic voting machines in Lake County, Indiana. Some footage has just come in. Let's take a look. Nobody ever said this was gonna be easy. Now, there remain significant voting problems that have not been addressed since the last election. Here to explain is a professor of computer science at Princeton University, Andrew Appel. Now, so they haven't fixed all the voter-related problems. Well, the problem with some of these computerized electronic voting machines is that there's a computer in them. And the computer will do whatever it's programmed to do. If it's programmed to add up the votes correctly the way the voters vote, that's what it'll do. But if it's programmed to transfer votes from one candidate to another, it can do that because whatever program is loaded in the machine controls what it will do. So you actually bought uh, a couple of voting machines. Last year I bought a couple of voting machines on the internet used from North Carolina. And this year uh, a court in New Jersey uh, ordered that the state provide some voting machines for me to examine to see if they can be hacked in that way. And you did it. So we have actually have a, a tape of that. Can we see it? So here you are. Here I'm picking the lock. You're breaking the law. Yeah. Um, this I'm doing. You're fast. <laughs> <laughs> so you're actually, what, so what are you doing here? Well, I'm going to install a new computer program in this voting machine that will cheat. So it can, you can program it to, to say, to vote so for whatever. So right here, I'm taking out the old chip that has a legitimate computer program right. that adds up the votes the right way. Right. Now I put in the fake program that transfers votes from one candidate to another. So you can actually rig a machine. So it, I could literally, uh, the, the knockoff of that, that was actually a funny piece we did, but you can actually do a version of that where well, I vote. Well, it won't look like that. Mm -hmm. The voter, you know, you'll press the button, it'll look perfectly normal to the voter. See, when those machines appear to malfunction, they're just malfunctioning. They're not cheating. If you're going to cheat, you're not going to let on. Right. So you press the buttons, and it can count up whatever it wants to. So I could say that, think that I voted theoretically for Barack Obama, like uh, right. I theoretically vote for him. Right. Um, damn it, I told him who I was voting for. I bet they're shot. Um, <laughs> Well, and you know, it could, in the it privacy could. of the voting booth, you can vote for whoever you want. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to influence me? <laughs> but theoretically, I place a vote. That vote can be rigged so that it is automatically attributed to somebody else. That's right. Now, how, how are we ever supposed to believe in a system that, where you can cheat so blatantly? Well, what we should do is we should switch to voting on optical scan paper ballots. So you mark the paper, you fill in the, the bubble, and you feed it into the scanning machine that counts it. And then the scanning machine keeps all those papers so it can be recounted. The very pieces of paper that the voter filled out can be recounted. And then there's no place for the computer to cheat because it can't change what's on the paper. You, you know what me and you're going to do? We're going to hang out and drink. You need to relax a little yeah, bit. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you dig this voting thing. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew Appel. We'll be right back after this.